Today we were discussing about network components and I told you about OSI model also. Okay. And uh, at the end we will discuss, we were discussing about firewall and I told you that firewall is a security system or device used to monitor or you can say inspect. Here we can use one term inspect inbound and outbound traffic based on predefined rules. It can provide access control, URL filtering, application visibility and control, high availability, malware scanning, VPN support, and many other features like protocol inspection, okay, user-based connection management or protocol-based connection management. All these things can be managed by the firewall. And you can use high availability to provide redundancy for the firewalls. So we will see them. And I was also telling you that we have two types of firewalls in the network. Like first one is called host based firewall. And network based firewalls. Host based firewalls used to secure the traffic for one host host in which they are installed. That's why in which it is installed. That's why it is called software based firewall also. Like Windows Defender. OK, and many antivirus solution will provide you firewall features, right? Here we have Windows Defender. OK, so here also we have some inbound rules and outbound rules. Based on these inbound and outbound rules, your PC or your, your traffic coming to your PC and going out of your PC will be monitored or inspected. OK, so on firewalls, we can define access control also, which type of traffic is allowed to come into your network or device and which type of traffic is not allowed or is allowed to go out of the network. Okay. So network based firewalls will be used to secure the traffic for multiple hosts connected in the network. Okay. So here we talk about the appliance like firewall devices which can be used to secure the traffic for multiple hosts connected in a network. Okay. Like we can use Cisco ASA firewall for example. See, for software based firewall or host based firewall, you can take the example of Windows Defender, Symantec firewall, not an, will, not an antivirus will provide you firewall settings. Okay. So these firewalls are software based. But when we implement the firewall in network as a device, as an appliance, then we can use these different manufacturer firewalls like Cisco ASA, Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, FTD. Okay. Then here we have. Not Cisco, Palo Alto firewall, then checkpoint firewall is there, right? 40 gate, many manufacturers are there. Cyber home firewall is there. Other than this, we have Sophos firewall, Dell, Sonic wall, Juniper SLX, right? Many firewalls are there. PFSense firewall is also there. So many next generation firewalls are there, which can provide you the features of next generation firewalls and uh, IPS also. Okay. We can perform SSL decryption or HTTPS inspection if we want to perform deep packet inspection up to its content of the packet. Okay. So we will see the features of firewall <coughs> and how to configure them in real time network. Other than this, here in CCNA, we will discuss or we will configure WLC wireless LAN controller wireless LAN controller. WLC is used to manage all the wireless components in the network from a central point of management. Okay. All wireless components in the network or components from a centralized central point of management. It can manage a collection of access point, access points, SSID, or security standards, wireless security standards, okay, different channels, right? Or it, it comes in the AP configuration itself and many other things like routing itself, okay, to send the traffic over different networks. Here, WLC will be used for the wireless clients. Your wireless clients as well will be, uh, you can say they all will be managed by WLC. Whether they will get the network access or not, you can define it as the access control list on WLC. Okay. WLC can also perform authentication of the endpoints, whether you want to use local authentication or external authentication like radius server. Okay. 
So WLC is a centralized device to manage all the wireless components in the network. We will use it, okay, here we will use WLC 2504 to perform all the practicals for wireless. In CCNA, we have wireless in CCNP when we, we configure ICE, Cisco ICE. In ICE also, we use wireless user authentication. At that time, we need to use WLC access point in the network, okay? And with this, we use access point AP. Access points are used to broadcast information about wireless network. Okay, this information will be received by the client by the wireless endpoints and they will see some SSIDs, right? Service set identifier in their Wi-Fi section. Like these are all SSIDs. These SSIDs will be broadcasted by access point all the information which is required to connect a wireless endpoint with the network will be broadcasted by access point and in the frame in the in the form of beacons these these frames are called beacons beacon frames okay we will see them so when any endpoint will try to connect with the wireless network he has to connect with the ssid ssid is used to represent a network name okay it is an identifier for the network for that wireless network with which you are going to connect okay like if i want to connect with my wireless network so i will connect with this network ccc ssid right so it will give the name it will name the network with which you are going to connect we configure it centrally we manage it centrally using wlc see if you are talking about a big network or a campus kind of network in which you have hundreds of access points or thousands of access points then you will not be able to manage them locally because access points can be managed them locally or they can be managed by wlc also we have two types of access points okay we have two types of access points autonomous access point and lightweight Autonomous access point managed locally. Okay, managed locally. AP without WLC is called autonomous AP. So if you have one or two access point, then you can use them in autonomous mode. Okay. And if you have multiple access points in the network, then it will be unmanageable if you are managing all the access points one by one locally, right? So we can use lightweight access point managed via WLC. Here you can say AP with WLC is called lightweight. It is called lab lightweight access point. Okay. So if you want to determine whether the connected access point is lightweight or autonomous, you can find out it with the help of its software image. Okay image can tell you whether this AP is working as autonomous or lightweight lab. So whenever here in enterprise network, in campus networks, when we use access points, we use a lot of, you can say, a large number of access points in the network, right? So we mostly use WLC to manage them. Here also, when we will perform the practical, we will use lightweight access point, okay? And we will use WLC to manage that. And we will configure all the wireless settings over WLC. These, these wireless settings, or you can say wireless information, will be broadcasted by access point. Okay. So they will use some oh. type of protocol within okay. them. Okay, so these these access points are there. So according to the requirement, organization's requirement, we, we can select autonomous or lightweight. Mostly if you have multiple access points in the network, like if any, if I talk about an enterprise network, you will have thousands of access points, okay, on your different locations. So you can manage them using the WLC. So these devices will be used within CCNA, uh, except firewall, okay. We will see firewall configuration in CCNP. Here we have overview of firewall, we'll discuss it again in our further classes. 
Now these are the network devices. Now after this, we need some other network components, right? Like endpoints are also there. Okay, in terms of endpoints, we can use a desktop, laptop, any mobile device like mobile, tablet. Okay, or you can say any kind of IP phone, IP camera. Okay, and many many of the devices are sensor based nowadays. In IoT, you will see. You will get the traffic from many types of devices like sensor based devices, right? So these devices are also considered as endpoint, which can actually create generate the traffic. Okay. Network printer is also one of them. So endpoints will be used to generate the traffic always. And when you are going to build the topology or build the network, we use a three tier architecture, right? In which you can combine some of the layers. Okay. Three tier architecture. Now, in this three tier architecture, we use three layers like core layer, distribution layer, and access layer. So, this core layer is referred to the edge devices, you can say the devices which are connected with the external network also. Okay. Like here, you can say that the devices which are connected with internet. Okay. Like here, I have these two routers. They are connected with the internet. Okay, here you can take redundant internet connection. This is ISP2. It is like this. So this one is your core layer. Here at the core layer, we connect high-end devices. You can use routers, layer three switches, and firewall also. You can use Nexus switches also, right? But here we use high-end devices according to the requirement of organization. And these routers will be fully redundant with each other. And here you will connect some switches. Right. This is called a distribution layer. Core layer will be connected with the external network. Distribution layer here we can connect layer three switches in the redundant manner. If you are creating a network like this, many times you will not see this, this, this uh, distribution layer. OK, let's say if there is any satellite branch uh, which is uh, located in a small city or in a small town. Maybe there are very less user count, right? And uh, you can see only five, six uh, candidates are there, or you can see up to 15 candidates are there. So we don't need that much of network devices, right? So here, rather than using these three tier, you can use only two tier topology, or you can say core layer and access layer. You can uh, obsolete this distribution layer, right? You can skip this. So it's a pure network requirement, but mostly in an enterprise network or campus network where we have hundreds of users connected in the network, we follow this type of approach, right? At distribution layer, you can connect your servers, like if there is any authentication server connected, or if there is any proxy server connected, proxy device, okay, then you can use it here in distribution layer, okay? Other than this, we have access layer at the end. Your users will be connected in the network. So at access layer, mostly we can use layer two switches like this. Okay, like this. So here, this is your access layer where endpoints will be connected. So these are three layers of implementation when it comes to uh, the enterprise or campus network topology. Okay. In data center, also we can follow this, these type of uh, patterns. Okay, or we use these type of topologies. Here, endpoints will be connected. So if you don't need this layer, you can skip this. If you don't have that much of user count, you don't need to connect multiple switches in the network, right? For redundancy, you can use two devices or a pair of devices always, okay? At this core layer here, we can also connect the firewall. And mostly if, we, if it comes to the security, we connect firewall layer. Otherwise, you can also insert the firewall in an existing topology, like right here and or here or up here, okay? So we will see the firewall implementation that is another thing but for now when you are going to build a network from scratch on any satellite branch or you can say regional offices right they will be configured as an enterprise network where hundreds of users are connected okay so you will be using this type of approach now to connect all these network devices here we need these cables right these these cables are called connection media 